All right, so what we want to do now is to look into the next stage of our ester prep, which is a simple distillation, gentlemen. Uh, we're part way through setting up our um, distillation, our quick fit set for distillation. A couple of things you just need to be wary of. Um, first thing what you'll find is that the, the, the clamps here, all right, aren't short enough. So when I'm going to clamp the round bottom flask, then it's not going to have to be clamped very tight. It's really just to support it there at that particular position, that's all. This should actually be vertical, so the best way to do that is to actually tip up the um, condenser from this angle, all right, to get this as vertical as what we can get. It's not that um, that critical, but the more upright we get that, um, the better it's going to be. Um, we're ready to can it into the round bottom flask. Um, what was our ester product, and that's what we're looking for. That tells us that most of the water has been taken up by the calcium chloride, all right? And that's what we were trying to observe, or well, that's what we're after, all right, in relation to that. Now, a couple of things to be wary of. Um, the things I'm gonna come around and check are, is there a boiling chip in there? And yes, there is, okay, that's all ready to go. Um, when you assemble the whole apparatus, uh, the main thing is that the ground glass joint should be sealed, okay? This one should be sealed, and this one over here sealed, okay, with the actual receiver on the end of the condenser. When we're doing it with, um, with our setup, it's important, and this is what people sometimes forget, the clamps open up in two ways. So if you notice that I've got the base of the clamp at the bottom of the condenser, see that one? Some people have the clamp up the other way, and when you tighten it, the condenser moves up and down. You don't want that. So I have the base of the clamp there, and we simply then just have to tighten it, not even tighten, I shouldn't even use that word, just to make it firm, all right, so it's not gonna fall off the end. We don't want these things suspending in, in the air and falling off and breaking. We use these clips, all right, and they are just an added um, measure that we um, have got access to. And so these little clips um, just help us to keep everything together, you know, should things get loose. So we're pretty lucky in relation to that. We don't need one here for obvious reasons. Gravity's doing its job. Um, next thing we have to do is to get our um, thermometer ready. Remember these are mercury thermometers, okay, and they go to 300, 300, 360, all right? And so you've got to be careful with these. We don't want these dropped on the bench at all. So just be uh, extra careful. This is the uh, adapter that we use for the thermometer. And as I said previously, it's got a silicon O-ring. You loosen off the O-ring, okay? You jam the thermometer down when you've actually loosened it off enough. So we're gonna put that down and that sits in the still head. And that will go right down. And we wanna try and make sure that it's right in line with the T-piece. We don't want it too high for obvious reasons or we're gonna miss the actual temperature, but we want it in line pretty much with the um, level that's gonna actually go into the condenser. The thing with this that you'll find difficult now <coughs> okay, and I'm just tightening it up, is to be able to actually really see the temperature um, as good as what we can get it. And I can see it sort of from this angle, more or less. Um, that's fine. What temperature are we going to actually collect the fractions at? Some of you got this wrong in the pre-practice. test. The, the ester's got a volume pot of 126, hasn't it? So where are you gonna start collecting? 120. Maybe 120, okay, depending on how pure, you might start at about 122 to 124, you might go to 128, maybe to 140, okay? So that's the range that you're going to collect your ester at. What else do you think is going to happen um, once you start the distillation occurring? Anything else going to come across, do you reckon? Yeah, there's going to be some water. There's going to be some water coming across, that'll be obvious. Maybe some alcohol, maybe some carboxylic acid, and I gave you all the boiling points of those chemicals, okay? So they might come, well they will, not might, they will come across, okay? And this is totally pure. We only did one extraction, so it's likely that there's gonna be chemicals still left in there that we haven't allowed for. All right, the other thing I forgot to mention was, over here, we've actually simply got our test tube rack, and all we do is we uh, move this along, okay, as um, we are collecting each fraction, okay? and it should be fairly obvious, more or less. Got to make sure that the water is actually turned on, okay, and which 
direction does the water go in the condenser? Uphill. Yep, so it always goes uphill. Thank you, cameraman, that's excellent. All right. So it always goes uphill. David, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, David Massey. All right, and what I'll do is I'll actually turn it on now, slowly. Um, it's ready to go. All right, now, what else did I forget? Anything I've forgotten? So we've got the thermometer set up. Okay, condenser's sealed. Water's in the bottom to the top. Um, we're ready to actually collect our fraction. How do we know, or how could we test, that we have the ester coming through and nothing else? So it's oily. Yep. Okay, so we might get an oilier product be produced. If there's like two layers. If there is, can you hit the power please, Jack? Yep. Would there be one layer that would just be ester? Um, possibly, yeah. Um, what, what sort of, of technique? Cloudiness, there's going to be water energy. Yeah, it's going to be cloudy water. What technique could we actually use if we had it set up to test for the presence of the ester? It's probably not going to do it, okay. We could take this sample, okay, we could run it over to a gas chromatograph, run it through the gas chromatograph and see what was in there. We're only looking for one peak corresponding to the ester, okay? We could use TLC, all right? But that would mean we'd actually need to develop the TLC plate. So just think about that, because that's one of the questions in the practical. How do I know that I'm getting a pure product, okay? All right, we do one distillation. Are we going to do two distillations? No, no. no. okay. We haven't got the, the time, unfortunately. <coughs> Why would we do a second distillation? To purify the ester. Good, so what we would do is, if this is our ester product, we would run it through the whole distillation process again. We'd narrow our collection temperature down. Then we'd do 124 to 128. Okay, we would do that. You can also do a test, and we haven't done this, it's not, not in the course. You can also take your sample and you can actually do a boiling point test on the products that you're collecting, all right? But I can't go through the theory for that right now. We haven't still got the time. So there is techniques where you can actually check the boiling point very accurately of a product that you're collecting. Obviously, we talked about chromatography. That's another way of doing it. All right, everybody happy to get started on that? Yes, thank All right. you. Remember, do not turn the kit on, okay, till I've come past and done a check. Make sure you've got your practicals at your bench, okay, because I'll come, <coughs> come through and I'll mark your assessment today. Finished.